My name is Professor Judith Suleidi. I'm funded 80% from my European Research Council starting grant and 20% by ETH Physics Department. With this EU funding, I was able to launch my own group on computational astrophysics, which I can run here at ETH year 2025. During these years, I'm an associated faculty member of the ETH Artificial Intelligence Center. Next to teaching and supervision of students, I also serve on three committees, which I'm very passionate about. One of them is the status of female faculty at ETH. The second is the cultural development committee of the ETH reading program. And the third is uh, the steering committee of the new and upcoming uh, ETH Center for Origin and Prevalence of Life. I was born in Hungary, but as it is usual in science, I moved around between countries during my studies and career. My first paid job was at NASA in the United States at the age of 21, just after I finished my bachelor degree. There, I used uh, space telescope data to study the formation of planets. After that, I moved to France, to the Mediterranean coast, to do my PhD. My next stop was Zurich. I got an ETH fellowship, and after that, I moved to University of Zurich as a senior research associate. Finally, last year, I started the faculty position here at ETH with this EU grant. Outside work, I like to go hiking in the Alps, swimming in lakes, and spend time with my friends. I am an astrophysicist. I'm working with computer simulations to trying to solve problems all the way from the formation of planets and planetary systems to the merger of galaxies and their black holes. To pick an example of our research projects, we try to understand how moons are forming around planets. Moons are not boring space rocks. In fact, after Earth, one of the most habitable places in the solar system are two moons of giant planets, Enceladus of Saturn and Europa of Jupiter. Both of these moons harbor a liquid water ocean under a thick ice crust. As we know it, life on Earth developed in oceans, therefore we are looking for such places in the solar system and elsewhere, planets or moons, which can also harbor liquid water because we believe these worlds are the most likely habitable. Moon formation is part of the planet formation process. While stars were during their infancy, they were still surrounded by the gas from which they formed. As this gas cools, it's going to create a gaseous disk around the young star, where the planet's going to assemble roughly over 5 million years. Giant planets such as Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are going to form their own mini disk around themselves, where their moon's going to grow. With our moon formation computer simulations, we try to understand how the moon system around Jupiter came to be, including this water word Europa. On this plot, you can see with red dots the building blocks of moons that are interacting with each other dynamically, collide with each other, and building up larger objects, eventually fully formed moons over a million year timescale. We do not know what were the initial conditions in these moon-forming disks. Therefore, we run these simulations 100,000 times, each time ch uh, choosing a little bit different initial condition within some reasonable parameters so that we can achieve the final system that is very similar to our Jupiter's moon system today. We use machine learning in order to understand which of the computer simulations are the most similar to the moon system around Jupiter today. Here you can see a PhD student Marco Cilibrasi's calculation, where he used a machine learning technique, TSNE, to try to find those computer simulations that are the most similar to the moons around Jupiter. The green cross represents the moon system today, and all the other dots on the plot are representing each of our computer simulations. Then we look uh, through all those simulations which are close to the green cross in order to understand what initial conditions led to the formation of the moons around Jupiter, including this water word Europa. 
understanding what conditions can lead to water-rich moons going to help us uh, also guessing how frequently we can expect water moons like Europa in the universe. Computational astrophysics is an interdisciplinary science between physics, computer science, and data science. Working together with colleagues of computer science and computational science allow us to find new numerical methods that we can use in our astrophysical research and understand better how our universe works. Astrophysics is a data-driven science. We use the telescope data in order to understand the processes that happen in our universe and to constrain our theoretical models. However, we have so much data from space telescopes, from space missions, from ground-based observatories that we cannot process it all with manpower. This is why we need machine learning in order to help us process all this data and help us constrain further our theoretical models in astrophysics. Astrophysics is a basic science, which means that it's trying to solve problems regarding natural phenomena and processes that happen in the universe. So it doesn't have to have an immediate impact on our everyday life. However, understanding our origin, our place in the universe, our universe's future are fundamental questions of humankind. Moreover, as astronomers probe the sky with newer and newer techniques, they find such technologies that we later on going to use in our everyday life. A good example from the past is the wireless local area network, VLAN, or cable internet, that was developed during astrophysical research, and now it is part of our everyday life. We can find it in every home and every office. Another good example is the GPS, which we use every day in our phone when we're trying to go one place to the next or when we navigate in our car. It would be impossible to say what current technique that we use in astrophysics going to be part of our everyday life in two decades. However, just like GPS or the cable internet, I think they're going to be technologies that we are using today only in research and is going to be part of our everyday life in 2040. What is my vision for 2040? Well, I think all data sciences, including astrophysics, will have a lot more data thanks to the new generations of telescopes that are currently building and the new uh, space missions that are launching in the next years. With all this new data, which I think by 2040 will be uh, initially processed by AI, we're going to be able to understand better how planets came to be, what's going to be our universe's future, and what's going to happen with our solar system. My personal wish for 2040 would be that we detect uh, microbial extraterrestrial life somewhere in the solar system, for example, on Europa, or Enceladus, Mars, or Titan, but my best bet is on Europa. However, I don't think that in such a short time scale this is going to happen, but I hope that it's going to happen within my lifetime.